which is fun. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for coming to the Boise Brave hosting Zoom conversation with Haley Batten and Kristen Armstrong. This is titled Finding Joy, and I think you'll learn about that as you talk a little more to the two of these. We've had a fun time putting this together. We appreciate everybody zooming in. I think we're all more familiar with this than we were just two months ago, probably. So uh, I think it'll go really smooth. A few quick logistical things. Um, if you can please mute your audio. If you have questions throughout, if you can either raise your hand or go into the chat function. So the chat function is on the bottom of your screen in the middle. And Carolyn, our team director, is going to be helping me manage that and make sure that we see you. Um, but really, the goal of this is to hear a little bit about Kristen's journey and Haley's journey, and then have a conversation with you all to talk about how we're navigating what's been going on the last few months, how we can find joy in what we're doing riding every day, regardless of whether we're racing or, or out riding with our family. So. Um, we're really excited to have everybody here to do that with us today. Another thing that might be useful is since there's so many people on the screen, if you want to go into the upper right hand corner and click speaker view, that way you'll be really be able to see right now Kristen is big in the center of my screen so we can see we can see her and all her nice bikes. I sure wish I had right. not like that. <laughs> Very nice. Um, so okay. Carolyn, did I miss anything before we get going? That sounds good. Just make, right. I would recommend using the chat so that I regularly check that. Yes, yes. Thank so you. Put the chat in there. Um, and for those of you that don't know me, my name is Lance Davison. I am a parent, um, volunteer as a coach, and also uh, volunteer on the board. And so I'm excited about this opportunity to bring Kristen and Haley here to talk with you all about finding joy. A real quick introduction. Um, oh, before I do that, we sent out a quick survey because I was talking to Haley and Kristen yesterday and they were asking a little bit about our team. So I told them we're upwards of 125 kids, lots of boys and girls from grade six all the way to 12. I sent out a quick survey, got a few questions that we might ask um, of you all at the end here. Um, but a really good mix. We have several uh, kids who just are joining the team this year, all the way up to kids that have been with the team for over four years. So Kristen and Haley, you have the whole gamut here to talk to. So this will be great. All right, let's launch on into it. So Kristen is, as you all know, a Boise resident and highly decorated Olympic cyclist with three gold medals around her neck. Um, and I've been privileged to work with Kristen on a few of these types of panels and it's just so fun to see her enthusiasm for lifestyle fitness and health and so um, she's really interested in learning more about the Boise Brave team and how we can help motivate kids to become lifetime cyclists and have healthy lifestyles so thank you so much Kristen for joining. Um, Kristen is also the coach of Haley Batten. Haley is a U23 competitive cyclist who up until um, well, you're continuing to train for the Olympics um, she coming summer, uh, but we're all pivoting and changing. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that, how she finds joy in her every day, um, being in California now instead of in British Columbia, Canada, where she goes to college normally. So I'm going to go ahead and kick it off to have Kristen do a little introduction of herself and talk a little bit about her journey. Hi everyone, um, I'm super excited to be part of this Zoom call with you and I really appreciate you taking the time to, to be part of this. You know, I know we all have a lot going on, but I have been coaching Haley and just thought after meeting Lance and knowing and learning about his involvement in the Boise High mountain bike team, I really thought it would be an amazing opportunity to bring Haley to all of you because of her background and how it resonates and how it aligns so much with, with each of you. And um, mostly I want you to experience and have access to an athlete that is currently competing, currently going to college, and also went through the NICA program. But I'll spend a little bit of time talking about my journey, but not much. It's not about me today. Um, I wanna make sure we have enough questions that we can answer and, um, Really, it's about 
really connecting you with, with Haley as well as just answering anything you might have. So really my background is super quick. I grew up in a military family. My dad was a Marine. I lived in America for three years between kindergarten and 12th grade and moved every three years of my life. And it wasn't easy, but sports were my outlet. Sports was the way that I made friends. It was my social outlet. And I was the kid who played every sport. Um, it wasn't a question of if I was going to play a sport, it was a question of which one I wanted to play. So even through high school, I played soccer, basketball, I ran track, and I also was a swimmer. And so I did not pick up the bike um, for quite some time in my life. I rode my bike to my friend's house. But other than that, when I would see people on bikes when I was in college, I thought, who are these people and what are they wearing? Because they were like in these spandex and I thought, oh man, wow. And so I would ride my, my bike to, to class, but other than that, it was just a commuter for me. And so really, I went to school at University of Idaho and I graduated high school in Okinawa, Japan. So going from Japan to Idaho was quite the transition. My parents said, you better get yourself some 501 jeans and some Birkenstocks. And I was like, there's no way I'm going into a pair of 501 jeans or Birkenstocks. And by Thanksgiving, I came home and it was probably because I couldn't fit in my, my jeans anymore, but I asked for a pair of 501 jeans. And I didn't play sports my first semester. And then the second semester I walked on and I ran um, the half mile at U of I. And at that point, graduated college, did what you're supposed to do, textbook, which was you're supposed to, right? You're supposed to uh, graduate college, get a real job. You know, I thought, who am I going to date? How am I supposed to have a family? This is what the textbook told me. And I wasn't doing any of that. In fact, I, um, when I first graduated, I started working at the YMCA. And so I actually ran and managed the aquatic center. So all of you are familiar with the West YMCA. And I helped open that. It used to be just a hole in the ground. And I helped um, open that and work there for a number of years before I even became a cyclist. There was a time where I didn't take care of myself as much as I used to being an athlete. Cause sometimes when you have a coach and you show up to practice, you, you'll learn later in life that you take that for granted. And soon you have to actually become motivated yourself and, and do this all on your own. So quickly I um, started swimming again and I started running and one of my friends dared me to get into a triathlon and I did. And I rode my mountain bike, my commuter bike that I had in school. And I had cages on my, my, my pedals and people were coming out of the water and they were on their bikes and they were passing me like I was standing still. And I was like, what? And I, in my mind said, said, well, I have tennis shoes on and they all have these clip things. So I for sure, I'm going to get off my bike faster and run faster. So I'll still like win. And that was far from the truth. In fact, I walked and it was miserable. And so I really decided to think, how can I get better on a bike? I saved all my money and I earned enough to finally buy a bike. And at that point when I purchased the bike, I didn't have any money to buy helmets or shoes. So over about six months period, I finally got enough to actually ride outside. And when I did that, I'll never forget the day that I decided to ride my bike to work one day, which was from the North End that you are familiar with to the West Y. And it was about 12 miles, maybe, maybe less, maybe 10 miles. And um, I rode my bike to work and I didn't ride home. It took me a long time to ride home. I got a ride home from somebody. And so that was really the beginning of um, me getting back into sport after being competitive in high school and college. And I was working full time and decided just to take care of myself because I felt my health, I wasn't taking care of myself. And it was the first time in my life I felt like, wow, I need to get fit again. And so that took me from, you know, one thing to the next. And quickly I started geeking out. I became a tri geek, did the whole, I don't wear socks, riding my bike thing. Um, I could make fun of triathletes because I was one, but um, I actually spent some years doing that. And I had some injuries that didn't allow me to run any longer. So I was asked to no, no longer run. And from there, I went back to work full time because like I said earlier, 
I wasn't supposed to be an athlete after college. I was supposed to buy the textbook, get a job, meet someone, have a family and go on and live my life. And so I thought this is a great excuse to not be in sport anymore. In fact, I'm too old to even think about being in sport anymore. And so I went back to work at an advertising agency. And from there, I had a local cycling team tell me they wanted to recruit me to, to ride. And some of you may be a little bit young to, to remember this, but one of the largest races in the world was in Boise, Idaho. And it was called, at first it was called the Orida Women's Challenge, and then it became the um, HP Women's Challenge. And it ranged anywhere from nine to 15, 16 days. And it lasted almost 20 years. It was 19 years. And a local team was invited to participate. And these were like world-class women. And they came to me and said, do you want to be on our team? Because we really want to field the team to race the Women's Challenge. I said, there's not, not in a million years am I gonna race the Women's Challenge and make a fool out of myself. Because I felt like we were the token local Boise team. I'm like, no way. And so over time, they convinced me. I was working full time. Um, after work, I would put my headlamp on and I would do dump loops and I would do pure spark loops in the dark. And then on the weekends, I would go memorize all the mile marker signs so that when a stage was going up a summit, I would know when I got dropped how far I had to go in order to like, get back to the town where they finished. I figured I would never make it. And so June came along and the Women's Challenge started and um, it was nine days long. And by the end of that, that stage race, I had three professional contract offers. And so I always say that if the race didn't come to Boise, Idaho, I would not have had the career I did because I was on track just to be a normal working person. <laughs> and so that provided opportunity. I signed my first contract with T-Mobile probably back when uh, some of you were born, which was uh, 2003 and at the age, mind you, of 29. And so you can see where the idea of me being too old to compete really went out the window pretty quickly. Um, so my career went like um, T-Mobile. I signed a contract with a team after T-Mobile called Lipton. And then I went over to Europe and raced um, on a team based out of Switzerland, lived in Switzerland. Came back, you know, obviously after several Olympic games and had a child and continued to race, retired twice, came out of retirement twice, um, went to four Olympic games. My first games were, was in Athens and I was only actually um, chosen to do the road race. I was chosen to do the time trial and about four days before the race, I was told that I was no longer on the team and um, that the arbitration, somebody had arbitrated against me and they took my spot. And so I didn't get to do the time trial. And then four years later, um, I went to Beijing and my goal was only to, to medal. I really wanted to just make the time trial team and, and do my best. And uh, my focus has changed. After Beijing, I was uh, 36 years old and retired because I wanted to have a family. Um, had a family and thought, wow, what an amazing goal would it be to be turning 40 and have a child and go to London. So that's what I did. Um, after London, I wanted to be back as a normal person, took a full-time job at St. Luke's, and from there, um, had about, I had three hip surgeries, I had a spine surgery, and about 15 months prior to Rio, I had this crazy idea that I wanted to go to nationals and, and see what I could do, and went to nationals, won nationals, and qualified for the world's team. Uh, world's was in Richmond, Virginia top American, and then it got me into Rio, which that's where I ended my career in 2016. Um, I won my last gold medal at, well, it was the day before my 40, 43rd birthday. So probably as the same age as some of your, most of your parents, uh, maybe older. <laughs> anyway, so a lot of times in sport, you get to a point where you have to find your own closure. And it took me a while to find closure. And it took me longer than most, but I've completely found closure, though Haley would say that I like to, you know, she hears rumors and she sees me on Zwift and I like to go hard and I like to go after things. That doesn't mean that I don't have closure in competition for myself. I can tell you I have closure because I'm coaching four athletes right now, three of them who um, I hope will be in Tokyo. 
and um, they're metal contenders and I have nothing, I, I pride myself on if, if one of them comes back with a medal, then I will claim that as my fourth medal. And so I feel really good about passing the baton and I, I can't say that I felt this way before Rio because it would be passing the baton to another American competitor. But now I would feel like, like I said, that's, that's my goal. My goal is to bring these women to the top level of sport. And that's why I work with a very, very few number uh, of athletes because it is difficult. But with that, um, I see you all out on the trails. Boise High is always very kind. And the etiquette, you always, I love it because I always see the Brave shirt. Sometimes I'm like, wow, this Brave looks very, very young because my son is nine and very tall. But I'm like, wow, um, it just means that I'm getting older. But I do see you out on the trails and I appreciate everything you do um, in the etiquette because you guys are always one of the friendlier teams. You always say, thank you. You say, I hope you're having a good day, ma'am. And I'm like, don't call me ma'am. <laughs> So anyway, with that, I'm excited to um, pass the baton and have Haley give some of her background to each of you so that then we can go through some Q&As and get, get um, some, some of your questions answered and, and share some more, maybe some things that you're interested in hearing about. So go ahead, Excellent. Haley. Thank you, Kristen. Real quick, as you pass it to Haley, uh, I would like to hear the story about the joy that Haley brings to you. That's one thing that, that's how we came up with this theme as you pass oh. the baton to Haley of um, just, I know Haley doesn't do a good job bragging about herself. Um, <laughs> that's always the better thing for the coach to do. Help the kids understand what's so special about Haley to you and we'll kick it over to her. Yeah. <clears throat> so um, I coach a number of athletes and the athletes I coach, you know, obviously I have a lot of things going on. Um, being a mom myself takes quite a bit of time, but also I started a new business just a year ago um, called Pivot, which is a local fitness center. And, you know, when I take on an athlete, my mantra is that I want to give an athlete everything I expected from my coach. So I wanted to make sure that when I take on an athlete that I'm dedicated to that athlete, but I typically will have a conversation with an athlete and kind of get to feel their personality. But honestly, Haley hasn't heard this, but I, I kind of am screening them for like how high of maintenance they are and how much they have to like talk like nonstop. And so um, I can tell within five or 10 minutes of speaking with someone and it sounds crazy, but I love, to have an initial conversation and just have a conversation and I can really get a good feel of really whether or not they really want to go after a big goal or if they love the idea of having a goal, but are they really going to put the work into making that happen? Cause there's a lot of people who love the idea of like being a national champion and then there's people who want to be a national champion and are willing to actually do whatever it takes to be a national champion. And I can actually, after all the years and having teammates, I'm like, I, I have this term for it. I, I, I have this term I use. It's kind of like they, they're lifestylers or they really want to <laughs> take it to that next level. And sometimes when I'm racing, I call it pack fill because we need these people to race, right? We need people to show up to races, but sometimes it's just pack fill because it's, it's the people who, when I show up to a race, I say, hey, when there's like a hundred people I'm racing against, I'm really only racing against 15 of them because those are the ones who really are taking it to the next level. So when I spoke with Haley, it was an interesting conversation. And um, some of the questions that she asked really intrigued me because there's not a lot of athletes that care about maybe what their power output is or how to get better, or they picked up on trends from their last coach. Like, I don't know why, but my coach was like, this and that, I'm like, oh, that just shows me this. But Haley was very in tune with what was happening in her training over the last few years, what she needed to be better, but also she was very clear on what she wanted her goals to be. And, um, you know, there was some definitely some heart to heart conversations and I wanted to see how she responded because, you know, she first, the first conversation was like, I'm like, what are your goals? And she's like, well, I want to win worlds and I want to win this and I want to win that. And I'm like, well, when was the last time you were top three at any of those? And she's like, well, I haven't been. I'm like, okay, <laughs> let's back it up a little bit. So 
to see the response from Haley on backing her goals up and having and shooting for realistic goals really tell me a lot about her character. Because if she was just adamant that she was going to win and she hadn't gotten top five yet, then I would have to worry because as a coach, that means I want to be set up for failure because maybe I can't get her to win yet. So we had some deep conversations and Haley has never heard this side from me before, but now she is. But Haley, <clears throat> there was never a time when I first started, I would get off the phone with Haley and I'm like, wow, I just want to coach this girl. And um, my husband's like, well, what makes her so different? And I'm like, she's just like happy. Like I can't get her to be like, I, she's always laughing. And I asked her how her ride was and she's like, oh, it was sick. It was like, the trails were sick. And I'm like, wow, I feel like I'm like 19 years old again. This is amazing. She's like bringing youth back to me. And I have been working with a few athletes where every day it was just a struggle. It was just another like, yeah, it's raining here and it's snowing here and my foot hurts and I have a headache. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, like this is, this is crazy. Because a lot of coaching is not just physical coaching, it's being their life coach. And there was just some really deep life things going on with some of my athletes. And I, I, I was just becoming almost a second parent. It was really becoming hard. And what Haley did when Lance says she's brought joy back in to me for coaching is I actually look forward to coaching Haley. She is positive when she has a, a performance that isn't so great. She always thinks things through and comes back and says, yeah, that wasn't my best performance, but here's where I messed up and here's this and here's that. It's never somebody else's fault. Um, she's not one who posts on social media like, oh man, I had a flat tire. I had a rough day. I had cramps. She keeps that to herself. Everyone has a flat tire. It's part of bike racing. And so I just always love how Haley takes the high road and she gets back and she puts her head down and she works on the things that she needs to work on. So She's brought joy back to me in my coaching because she's very grateful and gracious on uh, what I am able to do for her and is very understanding when um, she knows like when times are super busy, she's just like, oh, I know you're super busy. You know, do you have a couple seconds? So um, there's just this really great balance between the two of us. And we know that we're there for one another. Um, whether we can talk every day is maybe another story, but we were always thinking about, you know, what is she doing for training? She's very compliant and posting and writing notes. And obviously when I'm not responding, she knows the answer is no. So um, kind of like, it's a rest day. Can I maybe go out for a ride? And then she gets no response and she's like, oh, that's code for no. So anyway, <laughs> go ahead, Haley. <laughs> Thank you, Kristen. Uh, I guess I've done moot, but I've basically been laughing this whole time. Um, I think I think I need to do more Zoom meetings, actually, because I hear all the behind the scenes stories that I don't usually get to hear, which is pretty good. <laughs> um, anyways, working for me, working with Kristen has been a pleasure because um, I think obviously she's provided me with a lot of opportunities, but she's also nonstop, which is super cool and inspiring for me. We joke about that a lot, too. As you can see, she's kind of going all the time. <laughs> Um, anyways, I guess this is, I guess I'll be talking a lot about myself, um, but I hope you guys engage and ask questions and that I can be here to support you as much as possible, but I'm really excited to talk to you and um, hear what you have to say as well. So yeah, reach out and ask questions. Um, but I guess, yeah, I'll tell my story more like focus on cycling, but um, there's a lot of, yeah, just other stuff in there as well, just especially balancing school and and stuff too but I guess for me like biking really started when when I was young and um my parents perspective on life was very de definitely like a adventure and travel kind of perspective and um biking was always a vehicle for us to to really like explore different places and and communities and I think that's really where m my appreciation for cycling really started when I was when I was quite young and um the I think my like earliest memories are really in Moab with like groups of friends camping and just like going on these epic rides. And if you've never been to Moab, it's pretty cool. Just like such a unique, unique place to ride. And uh, that, that really, yeah, sparked my passion for the sport. And it kind of led into me, my dad was doing local races in Utah. I grew up in Park City and um, that definitely 
like provided an incredible cycling community for me there growing up and uh, he was doing local races and so when I was like opposite from Kristen when I was like nine I started me and my brother hopped in and we we're doing like the little races in the grass you know um, and yeah it kind of just like continued from there and uh, I started riding a lot with my family kind of tra transitioned to me and my dad going out after school put our you know lights on if it got dark and we have a lot of like epic little adventures out there like running into moose in the dark and like running away I remember one story actually we were like we almost hit this moose in the dark we couldn't see it my dad did so I jumped off my bike and started running away from it and my dad was yelling he's like get on your bike like what are you doing <laughs> but so many like random things like that that just like cycling was so fun for me like growing up and I think that balance of, of school, it was just really like something for freedom and exploration for me. And that time with my dad kind of transitioned to me, like being able to ride out on my own in the mountains. And I think that especially as like a young woman really allowed me to like get a lot of independence and like confidence, which I think has helped me a lot um, later on in life as well. So once I started racing, nationally and got a few like junior national titles I uh I well I, I guess I got I'd say at some point I kind of got this perspective that racing was a very individual sport and that if you wanted to succeed you you really had to do it on your own like it was you yourself and like if you made it to the top that was where like the most value was and I think when I got the biggest thing that I take away from high school mountain biking for me was when I joined that team and started there it kind of it really reminded me of how important community is and that kind of that I think because you had you relied so much on the on the team and and that's really what NICA focuses on and values I'd say that was a, a turning point for me and realizing like what a community sport it is and how much you need people because I was so wrong to think that like I was just out there on my own you know trying to trying to win races um but anyways also like the community and and opportunity that I got from NICA and the connections that I made were really the reason that I got on my first pro team the cliff pro team um all, they were originally the Luna chicks and that was like my dream team like those were the badass women and like blue kids eating cliff bars like they were I don't know snacks all the time and just like casually winning races so they were they were like the coolest to me and to be on that team it was like unreal you know just an all women's like best in the world so cool and really that like that opportunity for me was because of the connections that I made in in NICA so that was I think that's part of yeah just these opportunities and that the connections that you make with people um yeah so that was my introduction to the to the pro field and now I'm on specialized racing which I'm so stoked about and I'm based in Santa Cruz California with my family and I also attend university at, at uh, Quest University in, in Squamish British Columbia so I have a couple good spots but no longer in Park City although I miss it um, and yeah just racing bikes and going to school. <laughs> I'm looking for Lance, and I, I think he might. our leader. I think he may um, have gotten dropped. <laughs> so lucky for me, there's been a question submitted for Haley <laughs> that we can fill a little time with. Um, how do you stay so positive, especially in the COVID climate? Positive. Okay, dang, big questions already, guys. Getting us start off strong. Um, I'd say okay. To be completely honest life just makes me really stoked like I think I have this I don't know if it was my parents or like how I grew up but for me like when I just think about life I feel so grateful I think to have like this opportunity that we have and I think that like honestly that just makes me like so happy like I have and I, I feel very grateful for the for the opportunities that I have and the support that I have um that allows me to do a lot of the things that that I set goals for but I think those just the the ability to kind of choose my path in life and um, to have really exciting things going on and to challenge myself um, that I think that's honestly just like gratitude I think is the is the main thing that that brings together most of my happiness <laughs> if that helps <laughs> oh that's awesome um, 
I have another question because I still don't see Lance. So start adding your questions to the chat while we fill this time. Um, this is a question for Kristen. How do you differentiate coaching between a mountain bike rider and a road rider? Well, I think that there's a lot of um, opportunities to actually, my dream is to have all my athletes on both the mountain and the road. You know, I know that Haley does a lot of training on the road, although it's, you know, obviously on an off-road, more of a gravel bike, but we also are going to be integrating some road in her schedule this summer to, to mix things up a bit. There is positives to both. Um, the way you have to break down mountain training a mountain biker specific in a road specific and then i also have a track specific so she's training for a 4k on the track and so <clears throat> all of those, those are very different but what you have to look at is um the different types of courses and what the demands are on each of those courses at the end of the day you know if you have a circuit course on the road and you have a cross-country course like Haley has there's a lot of times where those profiles if you don't even know if it's dirt or road you can look at profiles with the technology we have and really see exactly what the demands are of that course. And so the way I coach is I coach for the events that they're aiming for. And um, obviously when you're fit, you're strong, then that fitness transfers over to some of the courses that might not be their specialty as much. But if we can target um, the, the systems that are required. So for example, if you have something where we're gonna train on bogus and we're gonna go up halfway and that's your goal. Well, that's a very steady up halfway. I mean, we can really train and really push that threshold, that upper end, we can call it zone four. But if you were to tell me tomorrow that you all were gonna go on the road or on the dirt and do a race such as like the dump loop, or you're gonna go on the dirt and do circuits around your favorite uh, course, we're gonna go up from Camel's Back, go all the way up, go up Sidewinder, go across Fat Tire and down Trail 5, back up again to the freeway. And we do that over and over. That's going to actually require a lot of peaks, a lot of valleys. So we would call those a lot of over-unders. And so very specifically training for that discipline. Also, looking into courses what makes it very different in mountain biking versus road would be your numbers and how you line up. And um, basically that's critical to any start of really dialing in the start of a race and where that first turn is that you have to be in position in order. So that's something that I don't have to train road racers for or time trialist or pursuit rider. So the mountain biking strategically is very critical on um, how we start, how we position ourselves, how much we expose ourselves, um, how much you may be barraged if you're on a descent behind a slow descender, um, but also fueling is a lot more difficult as a mountain biker as well because um, in the technicality of mountain biking and where the courses have gone these days, um, in order to actually ride well and fuel at the same time is very difficult. So there are some very specifics, but at the end of the day, what I provide as a coach, that's the scientific piece of it. But as I mentioned earlier, Connecting the science is one thing, but connecting the person and how they're feeling and getting them to a training plan that works for them so that they continually progress is really the key, no matter what discipline they're doing. Great. Um, Lance is back on the call. Do you want one more question, Lance, or do you want to take? No, go for it. Go for it. I, I heard um, <laughs> Haley talking a little bit about how she finds joy. That's good. Sorry, my, my computer somehow went on the fritz, but I'm glad we're still going. Go for it from your chat. Great. And, and it was still recorded, so you can listen to it later. I know. <laughs> um, this, this question, I don't know um, either of you can try to answer. I don't even know if I can answer it. Um, this, is a very, this is probably a question from a parent. Um, what type of impact do you think NICA can have on USA Cycling? <laughs> oh, I think that's a, yeah, I think that's a really good question. I think like there are a few things. I think one, it helps women in sport because it provides a support network for women. I think we've seen that in the, in the way that specifically our women's USA team has performed internationally and in the world's cups. Um, I think also it creates a connection from school sports into a more national competition like pool or, and then beyond that into racing internationally or in the world's cups 
And I also think that it will create a larger pool of athletes in mountain biking specifically um, to hopefully have more riders that are like really top performing and um, kind of build just the, the, the cycling community in general for mountain biking and grow the sport. And I think it's, it's showing and, um, and I think that's really cool. Also viewers and stuff. People are excited about mountain biking and that's, that's really exciting too. Yeah, I, I think that um, the impact is huge. I think that UC Cycling for years has missed, um, they don't, for as large as our nation is, we have very few cyclists and we should be doing um, a much better job at recruitment and recruitment comes from development. And um, NICA has shown that they are on top of development and not only development in high school, but there's a huge gap between performance in colleges and high school and performances, you know, you think, oh, I have a full ride scholarship in college. I'm gonna go be on the pro team. And the level of college cycling isn't where it needs to be because we have colleges calling and asking all the time, um, do you have any riders that need a full ride scholarship? And I'm like, are you kidding me? So there are a lot of breaks in the system. And I feel like there needs to be a continuum in the hospital world, we call it continuum of care. And this continuum of basically recruitment to, um, you know, from basically from youth to high school, to college, to um, professional. And I'm a huge advocate around education. And I believe that as a professional athlete, you can also get an education. And so there's no reason that uh, you should ever think that you can only have time to be a professional cyclist. Um, I would have to disagree with that. And so huge advocate for, for going on. Great. Good answers and great questions. Keep them coming. And Lance, back to you. <laughs> so um, I think that's a good segue when you're talking a little bit about adventuring, Kristen. Um, maybe Haley talk a little bit about how this change, I heard you talk a little bit about COVID when I, uh, when I got cut off, but um, how are you continuing to find adventure and opportunity amidst school moving to home and all that, similar to the kids at, here in Boise? Yeah, I think, I think uh, adventure riding is definitely, like now's kind of the time, right? We have, we don't really know when we're going to be racing again. And usually like the fall and winter is kind of that time for me anyways, when I get to explore a bit, just ride the trails or ride with people that I don't often get to ride with. Um, so I'm really kind of mixing that back into my, into my just schedule right now, right? Like with being with my family, I can, you know, go on rides with my, yeah, with my dad or with my, um, my mom, she can ride on her e-bike, which has been pretty sweet, <laughs> but also just like, we'll do like little picnic rides, you know, where we'll go out in the evening and have a picnic and ride home. And that definitely connects us as a family again, which we used to do when we were, when we were younger anyways. But yeah, for me, it's like, oh, I've never done this loop before and I don't have any like structure in my training. So I can just do that or ride more trails or um, that. But now is a really good time, I think, to for me to reconnect with like why I love the sport beyond having race goals and just why I love riding my bike so much and and kind of remembering that and bringing that back into um, yeah, what I'm doing right now. I love it and sharing it with your family as well. Totally. Yeah. Would you have, Haley, any uh, advice for these young students and athletes of like maybe common mistakes that you see uh, an athlete make? Um, something you might have learned, a mistake you made when you were a kid or something like that that um, can help these folks learn from? Yeah, that's good. Kristen might be able to tell you more <laughs> about that, but I'd say. Huh. I think, okay. Okay. This is a common mis. This is a mistake that I made when I was younger. I think when I got started making big goals as a junior, right. And maybe like long-term it's helped me in the end, but I, I had a coach that was awesome, like fundamental to my development, but definitely turned training more into structure than I think the writer that I was for me like I love just being on trails, riding with friends, doing group rides. Um, and also like, I also loved riding alone and doing structured training as well. But there was something I think that was taken away from just who I was as a rider 
and when riding became a little too structured and I became a little too focused on on racing performance and I think that just the aspects that riding has naturally and just that joy and uh like punchy climbing and adventuring and yeah making you know figure like yeah going on crazy adventures and walking you know I think that's like all part of of training you know and and riding with people that are that are stronger than you or maybe like not so much but they're more technically advantaged so you can have a slower day but more tech yeah like fun single track riding um or trail riding which I do a lot in Squamish because they all yeah it's a little test, test place. there yes <laughs> um but I'd say that was probably a mistake that I made is when I got a little too focused on performance I think I took away the the aspects of riding that I really loved early on at a young age yeah so enjoy the journey along the way. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's great. Do you have anything to add to that, Kristen? No, I think, I think she's absolutely right. I've um, now experienced coaching um, both Emma White, who will be going to the Olympics, and Chloe Dyger. So I started coaching them as teenagers. And obviously, I consider Haley very young as well. But having coached them as juniors, you know, I think that it was really important that, you know, for Emma, she just basically followed her brother around on his wheel nonstop and didn't have structure. And, you know, she's a lot like Haley where she's always smiling and laughing and it doesn't matter how good or bad their day is, it's always good. And so um, I think that's why, you know, you, your longevity in the sport you may not see it now, but your longevity in the sport's gonna actually all come back to how much you enjoyed it when you were young. And Haley's right, you know, one of the things that I noticed when I first started working with her is it's, it, coaches are great. All coaches are in here to help athletes improve. So there's not a right or wrong. There's a lot of different ways to get to the same result. But one of the things I noticed about Haley's training when I, took it over was there was nothing like go out for a two hour ride. It was like, when you do your two hour ride, you're going to do these five things. I'm like, did you, need, did you need a notepad? Did you need like sticky notes on your top tube? Because this is really hard. Like seven days a week, you have a sticky note on your top tube telling you like, you're going to do five by 30 second spin ups. And then you're going to do, and then you're going to take your right foot out and right foot. I mean, like what, there's always an agenda for every ride. And so even if it was an easy ride, there was like spin ups, you know, and if it was a hard ride, there's always, so what I'm saying is there's always structure in every ride she did. And for me, when I deliver coaching to Haley, yes, there is work to be done. And yes, there is structure to be had. However, um, I would say that, you know, three or four of those days a week, and even right now, right now there's no structure. There is time and she goes and rides. And sometimes it's, well, it's never below the time I give her. Sometimes it's a lot more than the time I give her, but then I'll adjust it the next week. So it's fine. Right now it doesn't really matter. However, when there is structure and we're training for a race, you know, there, there's definitely going to be two or three days of structure and there's going to be another three days of ride three hours. And so everything shouldn't be, you know, it, you can only take that so long before you, we call it, you know, before you crack, you're just like, you can't even do this anymore. Um, it's no different than when you walk into work, you don't walk into work. And if your boss gave you a sheet of what to do every day, every, all day, and you never could be empowered to get things done, you know, the, the way you get things done, you would also burn out on that job. So life is, there's a lot of parallels between life and being an athlete. So um, all these things are kind of a live and learn and you know, Haley sees it now, but when she was working with that coach, like probably most of you, when you're working with someone, like for that moment in your life, they're providing something really good for you. And I would say that Haley probably would say that she would never take away, uh, you know, it's not a regret. It's um, an opportunity to build character. It's she learned what she needs versus what she doesn't need. And if she didn't have that, then she wouldn't be able to communicate to me and maybe I would be that coach that, gosh, that Kristen, she was giving me so much structure, I had to leave her. <laughs> I'm lucky that she learned through somebody else. And now I get to like build upon what she learned because she's communicated that to me, so. Very good, thank you. 
Would you talk a little bit, uh, Haley, about, we've talked before about your, the value of your team and your peers, uh, like with the specialized team and everything, and that's unique and different now, right? With your time not being able to be with them in person. So how do you maintain that connection and how does your team help you succeed? Yeah, for sure. I think that's a really good question. I'll go back to, I definitely, I told you I had this, this time period when I was a junior where I was like, oh, it's like me alone doing this racing bikes, you know, I can't get help or that's bad. <laughs> and, um, and I think after, you know, this high school period where I really learned about community and how fun that is, it makes the experience better. Um, but also just like how, and then being on the Cliff Pro team as well, and now specialized, it's, it's these people like make biking fun, you know, it makes like all the travel days fun and it makes like riding the course fun. And I think that's, that's definitely what challenging about right now is we're definitely, we don't get those, those experiences together that I think make racing so awesome and why we do it. It's like these awesome adventures and excitement and like these thrills. And now I think I, I'd say the thing that I'm probably struggling with the most is it's more, you know, like we're chilling, you know, it's got this, no, no crazy things. No, like, Oh God, bummer race. It's like, all right, casual. But I think like still staying in touch with these people and thinking about these future and these long-term goals that we all have and our values. And then definitely like we've been able to connect on Zwift or I think a lot of riders are doing that and, and Zoom, Zoom, lots of these Zoom meetings. Um, but, but I think for sure, like we have these shared goals and I think that's the most important part and kind of the exciting thing is that we're building something that's not, it's not hopefully not over yet, <laughs> but we get, we have long-term goals that we still want to pursue and those aren't going away yet. And now it's just kind of, I'd say like a team building experience. Um, like it is, it's really like we're getting stronger, you know, as a, as a team and a group of, a group of people. And I think that will, will hopefully come out of this. Um, a lot more excited to race bikes and excited to show what we're capable of for sure. Fun, fun. Uh, there's a few kids here. We're really trying to focus on the fun part of it and everything, but there's a few kids who have some serious questions for you. So Seriously. one of the questions is, um, they want to know how many hours they should be riding their bike. Oh my goodness. Okay. I'd say, this is what I'll say. Maybe, maybe Kristen can touch on this, but I think for me, like when I got back from racing, it's like, okay, you're not going to be racing you well or we don't know when you're going to be racing there there were two things that i had to had to think about one why do i like riding my bike if i'm not racing tomorrow and two like what at the most basic level makes me happy and i i like honestly had to sit down with my journal and be like okay when i have this time period at home with my family what do i need to do to like every day feel content feel like I was productive, but also like rested. And I really like, I had to break that down for myself. It was like, okay, I need to ride. I need to exercise because I love that. But I also need to have times of like self care and some relaxation. Cause I like, I know I need it. You know, I know I, sometimes I do like, I'm kind of go, go, maybe like Kristen, maybe not as much as Kristen actually, but I like to be, you know, doing things. But then there's also like this family time and all these other things and other sports and other little activities and like hiking or, or picnicking, like I said, things like that. And I really had to like sit down and make sure I get a little bit of that in all of my days. And I think like, maybe I can ask you to do the same thing. Is that like, yes, maybe you want to be productive all day long so that you feel like super soaked. But honestly, like after I do that, I feel like pretty broken. But if I have like a rest day all day, I feel like lazy and I kind of beat myself up. So it's like, adding all these little pieces so that I feel like content and stoked with my day. And then, so I, what I'll like, sorry, this is a very long way to talk about how much you should ride, but I think that exercise is definitely important. And I think we have shown that for like mental well being and for just like managing your schoolwork as well, which I think you're all probably doing. Um, I, if it don't make it forced for sure, but I think start with something small go as long as you want, but don't overdo it. I think it's really finding a balance, but maybe like, I, I'm scared to give exact hours because I don't really know. <laughs> I'm personally- Doing it well, <laughs> exactly right, you're right. No so maybe Kristen, but yeah, keep it flexible, like start small, maybe like, yeah, I don't know. 
do it. My, what's fun? Make, okay. Make a route. Actually, that is my tip. Maybe route your route before and do it because that's my favorite thing. When I get to route something either epic or small and like completing it that I like that. So do that. However long it is, figure it out later, but maybe that's how you can figure out how long to ride. I don't know. I love it. I love it. Anything to add to that to Kristen? I would say just, you know, during this time, obviously we don't know when the green light will go. You know, obviously it might be different in the state of Idaho because we are progressing a little bit quicker. Mm -hmm. um, and our mountain bike season for high school is in, you know, late summer, the fall. And so we do have some time. But the number one thing you want to think about is um, I always like to say that your heart and lungs don't know the difference of fitness. So you don't need to apply that specific sport until it's time to apply the specific sport. So if you go out and you're hiking and you're getting your heart rate up and your lungs are going, your, your body's not saying, oh, you're riding and you're not riding. Yeah, it takes about, you know, three weeks to become efficient on the bike again. But I would say that you want to take this time now and, and have fun. I would um, really focus on what's that balance, like Haley said, to not become sedentary, but to always win. If I told you to get on the bike tomorrow, you should feel pretty good that in about three weeks time, that your fitness levels are going to jump up because you've stabilized this whole baseline. And so as a coaching perspective, if you take days off nonstop for two weeks, you are going to be unfit. If you maintain and you can go out and ride an hour or two a day, you're going to maintain a baseline fitness. You may not think that because you're not doing intervals, you're not doing this and that, but you are maintaining fitness. I promise you. But if you go cold turkey and you're like, yeah, this video game is pretty awesome, you are going to struggle when you get back. So it's about balancing and maintaining um, just some sort of baseline fitness and, and moving and not getting to the point where we're like, yeah, because what happens when you don't move for a certain amount of time, it's almost like triple hard to even start moving again because you get kind of, you kind of get used to it. <laughs> I think that's a very good point. So find a good adventure and commit to that adventure and do it and uh, be on your bike, get out there. I love it. I think uh, this would build and I apologize. We have eight minutes left till four o'clock and we still have questions coming in. So this is great. Um, and I do want to put a teaser that maybe we can do more of these fun conversations with folks like Haley and Kristen. And I know Kristen's in interested in investing in and in sharing with the mountain bike team. Um, but on that theme of just getting out every day and doing something, uh, Haley, do you have an outlet off the bike um, that you enjoy to do outside or something else that, um, that gets you active but isn't on the bike? Hmm. That's a, yeah, that's a good question. Um, yeah, for me, like growing up, I definitely was doing other sports too. I'd say in the winter, like although it's not winter, but I like to Nordic ski. So I definitely, me and Kristen implement that into my training a lot. And I think um, that's a great sport as well. And I, I love that. Um, but right now, like in the summer, I've been doing a lot of hiking, um, just to mix it up. It's not really exciting to me, you know, there's not that thrill, but it is like kind of cool. So I did go on like a little too long of a hike, like a couple weeks ago, <laughs> because I kind of pushed the limit a little too far. <laughs> but yeah, just things like that. I don't know, my family, we have like some, like a badminton thing set up. So we're doing that. I don't know, jogging. I did some jogging. Oh yeah, I tried to learn to juggle. Now that I'm doing school, I've been committed as well as much, but I was doing that. <laughs> Little things, you know, that's the thing. We have so much time, kind of, that I was like, oh, well, what can I learn, you know? But yeah. I love it, I love it. Um, we have a question about the transition. I know we had talked about this a little bit before. How did you go from high school racing to selecting college and then looking into pros. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, okay. I think there are a couple aspects of this. So I'll focus on the biking one first, and then I'll talk about school a little bit, especially if you guys, I know this is a weird time, but if you're looking at schools or thinking about schools in the future, I think this is definitely a part, it's an important part of your, your life. And, and so I'll talk about that a little bit, but I think, um, for me, I was, I don't think, um, NICA was the only, like my, the only part of my like cycling career that got me into professional racing. Cause I was racing a lot when I was younger. So I was doing like local races 
and stuff with my family before that and then kind of started racing like a, like uh, nationally a little bit and then I'd say NICA was just fundamental for me just like building that community and then making connections in the sport that allowed me to um, connect with like pro teams and things like that and then um, I guess what I would say I think the one thing I, w I hope like I'd say what I would say is to look at because I do think it is hard it seems like there's a gap between getting into NICA racing and then maybe um, not continuing as like just a, a a sport that you're doing but not racing so much so I'd say like definitely if you are interested in continuing racing you can do that collegiately if your school um, does that my school does not but there, I think co collegiate racing is uh, seems like a lot of fun and super cool so you can see if your school does that and then also look, um, just look at the USAC website, see what the national races are, because I'd say that's the first step of kind of engaging in the national, like the national USA cycling events that are taking place. And then if you want to become pro, like that's really where it starts is how, how you perform against the other juniors or the other under 23 riders. And then from there, um, there are like little development camps that will go to Europe and stuff like that. So that's really got that what got me excited I think about international racing is I got some opportunities when I was I think I raced in Europe when I was like 14 but I was definitely the youngest one on that trip but it was yeah that was like the the like kind of yeah that made me excited about that but um yeah so definitely try and race USAC races if you're interested in in racing long term um then for school I think that um, the, the school that I go to, it, it's in uh, Squamish, British Columbia, and I chose that school for a few reasons. One, because it has, uh, it's a small liberal arts and sciences school, so it has a more interdisciplinary approach, which I really appreciate, especially, and I think COVID-19 is a good example of that, is it's not just a human health issue, but it's also an economic and a political issue. So I think when I was, when I asked, like, what is education, I wanted something that, that allows me to when whatever I decide to focus on that I have a good understanding of other perspectives so that's that's what why I chose the school I went to um, it also has a block system so kind of like Colorado College but you take one class at a month like full-on super focused but then I, I you fully switch classes so that allows me to like take a block off and take time off for racing so that really allows me to to make the balance of being like a student athlete a lot easier also um, at that school instead of choosing a major it's like kind of a build your own and you ask a question and that I think by able being able to pursue something that is yeah build your own I think that my studies are much more exciting for me and it also makes the balance and the challenges of being a student athlete a little bit easier because I'm really passionate about what I'm learning about so I think that when you're looking at the schools that you're interested in, I think it is really important to think about like where you're going to be and whether or not you can pursue something that makes you really excited and passionate and thinking about the values that you have and, and your long-term goals when you think about that. So yeah. That's wonderful. Thank you, Haley. And I think so often kids probably think about those larger schools that you hear about on TV, but um, I love your finding the right fit for you for today and into the future. So yeah. For sure. Wonderful. Well, thank you all so very much. We're going to wrap it up here. Um, maybe let Haley say a <laughs> last thing or two. Um, and then I apologize, we didn't get to all the questions, but we'll find a way to follow up with you all. And, um, and we'll let you have a few closing moments, Haley, and then we'll kick it to Kristen and, and wrap it up here. Oh gosh, this is like the big moment right here. Got to close it up all nice. <laughs> Words of wisdom. And Kristen done good. gets the last call, so that's good. Um, just thank you all for letting me talk to you. And for, for sure, like Lance, if people have more questions, I'm happy to like email um, back to any of the students or, or coaches. Um, but yeah, thank you all. And I think just have fun, you know, um, do what you can to, to stay excited and ride your bike. And um, yeah, thanks for having me. Thank you so much, Haley. Mm -hmm, thank you. Kristen. Um, yeah, thanks for, for joining. Tell, I see about 32 people on right now in Lance Mission. There's over 100 people on the team. So go tell all your friends how awesome it was to listen to Haley and her stories because um, we're going to limit it next time. So we'll give you first preference when we do offer another one of these. <laughs> um, 
No, we want everyone to participate. And so I know that sometimes people are like, oh, a Zoom thing, oh, this, I have to get on the computer. But really we're here for you. And so we've gotten our backgrounds out of the way. So as we can bring more of these um, virtual platforms and, and go through or maybe hone in on a, a certain topic, um, Haley and I are both on, on board to, to bring you whatever it is that you all may be interested in and, and, and talking about. And, you know, whether it's smaller groups and more, you know, conversations back and forth, um, anything. But, you know, my dream is to, to bring Haley to Boise one day. So as you connect with Haley on these virtual Zoom calls, um, maybe there's an opportunity for Haley to come do some, some, some clinics for Boise High because one of the things that Haley's known for is she's uh, a pretty, pretty darn good descender. And so I think that where mountain biking's going these days, you know, we can be as fit as, as ever, but if we don't have the technical skills down, we're gonna, we're gonna have a hard time. So maybe one of your, your back pop, pocket secret tools will be that Haley comes and gives, gives a clinic. And I think we can convince her to get to Boise. Keep on making your backgrounds your favorite trail and she'll come. <laughs> there you go. I don't know. I, I think you're going to have a hard time not getting me to come. Yes. Yes. Yeah, thank you so much. And uh, we're blessed to have great coaches here with Andrew being our lead coach and always teaching us those new skills. So you are more than welcome, Haley, to come visit. We'd love to host you. And uh, I appreciate Kristen having the vision of um, telling our story and, uh, and helping us maybe link up in the future. So everybody that attended, we'd love your feedback. We'd love to provide more of these opportunities for you. Um, and I'm gonna let Carolyn just wrap up with a few reminders of what is coming up for our season. Keep an eye on your email inboxes, but uh, <laughs> we appreciate you all, Boise Brave family, and, uh, and we're excited about the months ahead. Yeah, and I, I'm just going to cut in real quick and then let Karen, Carolyn wrap it up. The, uh, so thank, thanks for uh, joining, really, and uh, loved what you had to say. And then uh, we'd welcome you to, to ride with us uh, when, when things open up. And so uh, best luck in your racing and, and uh, look forward to seeing you again. Awesome. Thank you, Andrew. Cool. Um, I was just going to thank you, Kristen, for your time. You're always inspiring to me. I'm uh, two days older than you. Uh, you're two inches taller than me. So man, I got some work to do. When you were uh, talking about the, the women's, I went and got my jersey behind me that I got. It uh, has Orida on the back. It's from uh, the Women's Challenge. It's a race leader jersey. I never personally wore it, but I got it somehow. Um, and Haley, I could be your mom. Woo! But um, I love your blog. I'm so jealous that you've been to 18 countries and you're 21 years old. It's super inspiring to me. So I hope you've inspired a lot of the student athletes. Um, and I love Canada. So good job. Um, in regards to the Boise Braves, the governor was just on today at one o'clock and he's announced that stage two opens tomorrow at noon, excuse me, Saturday at noon. I'm not sure how the noon plays into that, but uh, the Idaho League will start um, their registration tomorrow. It is ongoing until July 1st. It is a non-refundable fee, so you as an individual can determine when you want to register. There's no pressure. Um, the Boise Brave team decided to postpone our registration until the end of stage three, which is around June 12th. We really wanna know how the next stage unfolds, and uh, this gives the Idaho League, the NICA League, and ourselves time to really plan so that we know what we can offer and what we can control. And that's what we're focused on. Um, this season will not be like any other season that we've had in the past, which is a good thing. You know, we might not race, but that's okay too. Adventures are fun, it's different. We will have a season um, and we might uh, come up with different ways. So the focus is more kids on bikes and being brave and we'll continue to communicate as we gain information. So we're trying a new email system, trying to not provide so much information and one big thing. So keep checking your email. That's what Thank I got. Thank you so much, Carolyn. Thank you, everybody. Take care, Kristen and Haley, and we will see you all on the trail soon. Thank you. Thank See you, you guys. Good job, Lance. Take care. Thank you.